Hello my friends, Dr. Sayed Kazmi here once again and today we will be discussing pediatric eczema with the help of a short case. So here we go with the case. Uh, it's a case of a two years old boy who has got a history of uh, recurrent episodes of uh, very dry, scaly, pruritic eruptions on his face and extensive surfaces uh, of his body as an infant. And now he is presenting with multiple pustules that are oozing and that are crusting. And as far as these pustules are concerned, uh, different medications have been tried. Uh, his own doctor has tried hydration. His doctor has tried emollients, uh, some topical steroids, uh, as well as calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus. And none of those medications have helped in improving these pustules. So the picture is here. You can see that this child has got some scaly uh, lesions on the extensive surface of his wrist. So here you can see that there is a lesion and it has got very small pustules which are scattered here and there on the dorsum of his hand as well as his wrist. Some of these pustules have ruptured actually and you can see uh, some raw skin beneath which probably is oozing as well and you can see that there is a bit of a uh, crustacean around it here you can see some uh, crustacean after the uh, this raw surface has been healing so this child who is now two years old he has got a past history of dry scaly eruptions on face and extensive surfaces now a child who has got scaly pruritic eruptions has got most probably eczema. Remember eczema in infants usually starts uh, with the skin eruptions on the face. Then it involves the flexor surfaces and as the child grows then it changes position and it goes on the extensive uh, surfaces. But in this particular case this child has now developed some pustules and these pustules are not responding to any of the conventional eczema treatment. So the question is, what is the diagnosis here and how would you manage this child? Now remember, a child who has got eczema and he has got pustules or vesicles which do not respond to conventional uh, eczema treatment, that child has usually got a complication and that complication is secondary infection. Now, there are two types of secondary infections which are very common in eczema. The most common is Staphylococcus aureus infection, Staph aureus. And this Staph aureus can be um, uh, what you call as MRSA or uh, it could be MRSA negative as well. So it could be methicillin resistant or it could be methylene sensitive uh, depending. But Staphylococcus aureus skin infection is one of the most common secondary infections in eczematous skin. Why? Because Staphylococcus aureus is one of the normal comments of the skin. And as the skin breaks, the immune system goes down, uh, it gets an opportunity to infect the skin. So Staphylococcus aureus. And number two is herpes simplex. And herpes simplex gives a, a, what we call as eczema herpeticum. So it's a widespread a viral infection of the eczematous uh, lesions and um, that can sometimes be life-threatening as well so we call it as eczema herpeticum how would you differentiate whether it is eczema herpeticum or whether it's staphylococcus aureus so staphylococcus aureus mostly presents with pustules so there would be pus filled small papules while eczema herpeticum mostly presents with vesicles. So there would be clear fluid instead of, you know, uh, whitish or yellowish fluid inside these pustules. So that is how it presents. The treatment also different because for Staphylococcus aureus, you have to give those antibiotics which are effective against Staph aureus. So again, uh, one of the most common uh, antibiotic which is very effective against Staph aureus is flucloxacillin. So flucloxacillin for Staph aureus and for eczema herpeticum, we have to use a cyclovir. Now again, depending on the condition, if the child is very sick and uh, he doesn't look well, then you have to give intravenous 
fluclocicillin or intravenous acyclovir but if he looks fine then you can give them oral acyclovir and oral fluclocicillin at the same time as far as these lesions are concerned, you can also give them the topical forms of uh, these medication as well. Uh, acyclovir also comes in cream form. Uh, Flucloxacillin doesn't come in, but we have then got another antibiotic uh, which is very effective against Staph aureus and that comes in um, topical form as well and that is fusidic acid. So fusidic acid is only used in the form of cream. So you can use it if for the local lesions. Now let's say if this child is otherwise uh, well in himself, then you can, uh, and this because these are pustules, so this is uh, Staphylococcus aureus infection. So I would call here it Staphylococcus aureus infection. But if it were vesicles, clear vesicles uh, all over the eczematous lesions, then it would be most probably eczema, herpeticum, and in that case, you have to give acyclovir. So as I said earlier, if the child is well, you have to give them oral. Uh, acyclovir or oral fluclocicillin uh, and if the child is um, unwell then you have to give intravenous uh, forms of these medications uh, here in this particular case you can give him oral fluclocicillin because this child is otherwise well and you can also give him topical fusidic acid so the treatment here would be oral fluclocicillin for 7 to 10 days and topical fusidic acid again for 7 days that should clear up the lesions now a little bit about the um, eczema in children now eczema is basically an inflammatory uh, condition of the skin it is also known as atopic dermatitis and basically it's a you can classify it as an autoimmune disease because there is immunity against the skin cells so basically this uh, uh, immunity is mediated by ige so these kids have got a lot of ige in their blood so somehow that ige starts attacking the cells in the skin and that leads to chronic uh, inflammation uh, hyperkeratosis and all those changes that we see in eczema so these eczematous kids usually have got a family history and remember as far as the hallmarks of eczema are concerned there is usually a positive family history these are uh, especially scaly uh, lesions on various part of the bodies uh, usually in very small infants uh, it usually starts with the face so they can have like patches on the cheeks as the child grows then they have got um, patches on the extensive surfaces as well as the flexor surfaces uh, and these lesions are very much pruritic so there is a lot of itching with uh, these lesions so uh, remember the main features uh, of this is extensive surface involvement in infancy but usually it starts the face then as they grow older it becomes more flexural in nature so for example if a child is let's say two three months of age so if the eczema starts they would be having patches on their face as they grow up maybe around one or two years of age they would be mostly having uh, patches along the extensive surfaces so mostly around the dorsal of the forearms uh, along the back and as they grow up like in childhood then they have got this typical flexural involvement where they would be having like lesions in the anticubital fossa on the volar surface of the wrist in the groin in the popliteal fossa around the neck folds so on and so forth and there's always lichenification with chronic scratching lichenification means that the skin becomes thickened it becomes leathery and thick obviously because there is a lot of you know uh, skin uh, cell multiplication because of the chronic inflammation they can have fold under the eyes which we call as Denny Morgan folds and sometimes they can have other features uh, um, uh, allergic features like they can have coexisting asthma and they can have coexisting allergic rhinitis which are very strongly associated with eczema as well so they may all like you know uh, you find them all in a single patient and obviously uh, there is a decrease in innate immunity in the skin uh, where these lesions are there and that can lead to increased susceptibility to bacterial and viral skin infection and I told you that the most common bacterial skin infection is Staphylococcus aureus and the most common viral uh, skin infection is eczema herpeticum caused by herpes simplex. Now very quickly what is the management plan to treat uh, these eczematous childs? Remember there are five principles of treatment. The first principle is to reduce pruritus. These lesions are very much itchy and these kids are very much you know disturb all the time itching themselves so uh, they can be given oral antihistamines like chlorfenramine can be given either throughout the day or uh, preferably at night time because they've got a little bit of sedation as a side effect as well so that helps as well and at the same time bland emollients can be uh, put on these lesions that also helps in reducing pruritus 
Uh, the second principle is to improve the skin barrier. Uh, how do we improve the skin barrier? Because remember, as the skin becomes thickened and there's chronic inflammation, there is always a danger of the skin breaking down, causing secondary infections. So again, the most uh, uh, best treatment for this thing is uh, use of emollients, so emollient creams, uh, hydrating agents. They are used uh, where the lesions are there and occlusive dressing. So occlusive dressing to trap moisture are also a very good uh, management plan to improve the skin barrier. The third principle is to reduce inflammation. Now there's chronic inflammation in these lesions. Topical steroids are uh, very effective in this. On the face, we use mild uh, topical steroids like 1% hydrocortisone but for the rest of the body we can use some potent uh, steroids like um, uh, beta methasone, uh, dermovate, petnovate, things like that. Similarly, those cases who are resistant to topical steroids or where there is parental concern regarding uh, steroids, they can be given topical calcineurin inhibitors uh, like tacrolimus uh, and that is very effective in controlling uh, mild to moderate eczema. The fourth principle is to control infection. Again, as I told you, the most common cause is Staphylococcus aureus. We've got the Staph aureus infection. You have to give flucloxacillin, uh, either oral or intravenous, depending on the condition of the child, along with topical fusidic acid. And if it is eczema herpeticum, then depending on the condition, you would be using oral or intravenous acyclovir. And the fifth principle is to avoid irritants. That means the child has to use fragrance-free soaps and fragrance-free shampoos uh, and also cotton clothes, uh, avoiding nylon and the synthetic fiber clothes because that they, they, they just aggravate the condition. So these are the five uh, principles of management plan that we use to treat pediatric eczema. So this was a very short lecture with the help of uh, a case to make you understand what is pediatric eczema and what are the principles to uh, treat uh, eczema in children. I hope you have liked this small video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Um, every little subscription helps. And if you have liked this video, then just give me a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. I'm signing off. Uh, have a very good day. Bye-bye.